Hey guys, welcome to another video. It's a new day and there's a new announcement and that is that the release date of the 12 Titans has been dropped by League of Rockets. You can see the actual trailer. Uh, I'll put that in the description. You should definitely go check it out right now. Just pause this video, go look at that trailer. You're going to be super hyped. Uh, but yeah, just to, as well as informing all of you guys who have been asking when it's going to be, it's going to be right, right there, February 17th, 3pm EST, 9pm CET. Um, so if you're not from one of those time zones, just Google it. You'll be able to find out what the, that time equates to in your time zone. Um, uh, but yeah, besides informing all of you guys that that's when it's going to be, I decided to make some player profiles for all of the players who are going to be in the, in the final feature, in the final film, um, so that those of you who are not as familiar with them can be a little bit more familiar when it comes to the day. Uh, so let's get right into it. Number one player that we're going to be looking at is the North American qualifier Sharif, who is from America. 17 years old. The only player in the entire tournament who I think uses both Dominus and Octane pretty frequently. Uh, so that's pretty interesting to see. His main achievement, as far as I know, is winning that qualifier to actually make it into the tournament. So, you know, mad, mad props to him. It was a great run. And five of his, well, four of his most recent results that I've noted here are the uh, the run up to winning that tournament versus you know Sathu semi final wrestles in the final since then he dropped a couple of series on my stream uh, both very very close series against very top tier players in North America so nothing really to be ashamed of but that's uh, who Sharif is for those of you who don't know again uh, if you haven't seen his grand final um, match versus Rettles well you've just had it spoiled for you but <laughs> even though it, I've just spoiled it for you go and watch it it's the most hype match I've ever seen in the history of Rocket League and I'm not exaggerating in the slightest when I say that it is it is that hype so definitely go check it out um, and his counterpart over from Europe is of course Clay X he qualified through the EU qualifier um, and as far as I know his team existence haven't uh, been able to qualify for RLRS. I'm pretty sure they didn't last year. Uh, no doubt they're going to be making another splash at it in Season 5, though. Uh, but, of course, Clayx is Spanish. He's 16, Octane player, uh, which is the most popular car in 1v1 and in Rocket League by far. And as you can see um, from his... Uh, or just the same as um, Sharif, most of his most notable recent results are from that incredible run to win the, the EU qualifier. And then since then, he lost in a very, very close series to Jesse uh, on my stream, which is another phenomenal series. I've got to recommend that one to you who have not seen it already. Great series. Incredible comeback uh, or comebacks going either way. So I definitely recommend that as well. Um, but yeah, the other players who uh, we're going to look at um, have a bit more to talk about. So we'll just move on. And the first one of those is Turbo Pulsa, who is... <laughs> He's looking great in the top left there. That's really good stuff. But yeah, he's Swedish, 19, another Octane player, the two-time RLCS champion, season three and four. He's not really been seen much in the 1v1 arena since um, he played in a 1v1 tournament that I ran. And I don't think he's played much since. Uh, but yeah, in that in that 1v1 tournament, I think that was when he lost 0-3 to Ocelon and got eliminated straight away. Um, and before that, he dropped a series 0-3 to Scrub and another series 1-3 to Devo. So he's not taken any no notable series wins in the past year in 1v1. However, he has taken two RLCS titles and multiple other second place finishes. Like this achievements line, I decided to just pick the two most noteworthy achievements for everybody that uh, that, I'm, that we're going to be looking at, all the players involved in 12 Titans. But for Turbo, you could have seven or eight lines here for 2017 alone. He's had that many noteworthy tournament finishes. Um, and that's, if he's going to do well in 12 Titans, that's what the experience that he's going that, to, that, that he would have to drop on. Another perhaps underdog player, uh, but no, not lacking in experience is Marky Duda, uh, the I think the oldest player in the in the 12 Titans lineup of year two at 21, uh, British Octane player, first place in RLCS season two. That's a while ago now. It's I think what that that'll be 14 months back almost. Um, and more recently, Dreamhack Summer, uh, first place there as well. So a couple of LAN wins for Marky. Again, no notable series wins in 1v1 in the past year. A close series with KDOP though, and that's another phenomenal series if you haven't seen that one. Uh, that was That's available on my YouTube as well, definitely. Like this is, I'm basically plugging all my other YouTube videos through this, but really incredible series, Marky Duda versus KDOP. Uh, KDOP was able to take it 3-2, to two, but I'd, 
highly recommend that one to you as well. And his 0-3 loss to Cuxer, well, they were they were interesting games as well. Although he did drop that one 0-3, uh, that was very interesting to see. But that's actually and that was the first time I think that Cuxer had taken him in a series ever because before that Markey was very dominant in that matchup. And of course Markey, one of the best one v one players historically, still even though he's not had the recent results to show that. Maybe who knows? Maybe uh, 12 Titans is where he can finally do that in, in year two. Another player of decent legacy is uh, Kronovi, the Mountain, uh, age 20 octane player for, uh, who's American but living in Canada at the moment. So I don't know how long you have to how long you have to live away from America before they just kick you out forever. Uh, but he's got to be careful because he doesn't want that to happen. Uh, of course, his most notable achievement is winning RLCS season one way back in the day, um, and you you all remember that. But of course. He also won E League, and then of course he came second place at DreamHack um, Germany just a couple of weeks ago. So he's kind of got in the in the middle. There was just a drought of big results, and then you know way back at the beginning, huge results. Right now, seems like he's getting huge results. So uh, twelve times year two is another opportunity for him to just add to that. Um, you know, really stacked finish to twenty seventeen and beginning of twenty eighteen. Notable um, results in the past year. Involved the 4-2 loss to Scrub, um, a 3-0 win against Floris, a 1-3 loss to Devo. That was a rematch of their uh, famous uh, four, or the, the famous match where he won 4-2. Uh, and a 1-3 loss to Fairy Peak. That's his most recent result, is a 1-3 loss to Fairy Peak. Of course, that was played in US East server, because now that Kronovi's way over in the west of Canada, uh, it was pretty even ping, and Fairy Peak was able to edge that out. So that's his most notable recent results. Still, a player with great experience to draw upon like Marky and Turbo. So uh, that if, if if the recent results aren't um, the reason to be confident in him, certainly the experience is because the next player that we're looking at, Ocelon, is uh, this is his biggest tournament by far. This is the most nervous that he'll ever uh, that he's ever gonna be in, in a Rocket League tournament. Well up until this point. Uh, he's sixteen years old, the only Dutch player in the lineup, another Octane player. Um, but he's not completely new to the top level of the competition as he did finish off our sixth place in our RS uh, season four, which I think is being rebranded to just the rival series, which is, I think, a good idea because RLRS sounds pretty silly. Um, but yeah, he's he's a ranked warrior as well, had two accounts in the top 10 for a large part of 2017. Um, and if you look at his recent results, there's, you know, it's a bit, a bit, a bit of a mixed bag. His, his six most recent results against top tier players include a 2-0 win over Devo, a 2-0 loss to Fairy Peak, a 2-1 win over Kadop, a 2-1 loss to Flores, a 2-1 loss to Chaussette, which was a bit of a weird matchup because there was that demo bug going around. Uh, and then most recently, a 3-0 crushing defeat to Fairy Peak. So, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty shaky results, pretty back and forth uh, before his... Uh, zero three smashing uh, from the French uh, player, uh, but yeah, he's he's absolutely going to need to draw on all of his, his experience from one v one if he wants to do well, uh, because that's he he doesn't have the same tournament experience as uh, the other players that we've just been taking a look at uh, right before him, and that brings us on to Ocelon's friend and rival uh, Floris. Uh, that's him on the left, by the way, not the the horse mask wearing Metzenortis. Uh, but yeah, he is a British player, 17 years old, another Octane, what a surprise, um, and has more consistent, more success in recent times than his uh, buddy Ocelon uh, in online competition, and that includes uh, winning the Bad Panda 1v1 Invitational, which was uh, all of the best 1v1 players in Europe uh, in one tournament, Flores came out on top. Um, and he, he also held rank 1 and 2, not just 2 to, to against the top 10, but he held rank 1 and 2 simultaneously uh, at one point during season, I think it was season 5, uh, or was it season 6, I forget, but it was certainly uh, in the past year. Um, I and mean, if we look at his most notable recent results, we got a 3-2 win over Kadop, a 2-1 win over Ocelon, a 3-2 win over Fairy Peak, a uh, 2-3 loss to Dapper, a 3-2 win over Lethemir, and a 2-4 loss to Scrub. So the one thing that jumps out to me there is close series. Every single one of these series... Uh, looks to be pretty close. The only one that didn't go within one game is the Scrub Killer matchup, which has always been historically Flores' weakest matchup. He's never beaten Scrub in a series ever, out of I think four, at least four times of trying. So he really needs to try and get that. Uh, that or he probably just hopes that somebody else eliminates Scrub for him. But if that doesn't happen, he needs to he needs to try and get that uh, off his back because he's never beaten Scrub before. Everybody else. You know, he's he's, be he's beaten Kid up, he's beaten Fairy, he's beaten Ocelon, he's beaten um, 
uh, a couple of other players that are going to be in the 12 Titans. But actually, he's, I don't think he's ever beaten Cronovi in a series. Cronovi and Flores' first ever live stream appearance on my stream uh, took down Flores 3-0. So that's maybe another one that Flores wants revenge for. But anyway, we've been seeing Fairy Peak in everybody's uh, most recent results. Let's just take a look at his um, right now. Uh, the 19-year-old Frenchman, one of two 19-year-old Frenchmen in the tournament, uh, and one of two players who likes to play both Batmobile and Octane, or the only player who likes to play both Batmobile and Octane um, back and forth. And he, he's kind of come into a good run of form as well recently, just like Kurnovi uh, in terms of tournament results, uh, with a third place at E-League for himself and a third place at DreamHack Germany, uh, which is just a bit worse than Cronovi in both of those uh, in both those tournaments um, but you know he he had a pretty consistent 2017 it didn't just spark up at the end like Cronovi's did Fairy Peak was solid throughout one of the most consistent players I think probably the best player not to win a tournament best player not to win a major in Rocket League is probably Fairy Peak uh, because of how consistent he is and how solid he is for his team um, and even his 1v1 results 2-0 win over Scrub Killer. Still, to this day, Fairy Peak is the most successful player against Scrub Killer in uh, Best of Series. 2-0 over Ocelon. 2-0 over Devo. 2-1 over Devo, sorry. Uh, and then we've also got another 3-0 over Ocelon. 3-1 over Kronovi. Very, Those are both very recent. And then the 2-3 loss to Floris in the... the in the 1v1 Invitational, which Floris is able to win. Uh, very, very close series. So Fairy Peak, super solid player. A lot of people picking him as their favorite to win the whole thing. Uh, and the, it's the stuff like this. This is the reason why he's just so consistent. And the fact that he can take out Batmobile or Octane, depending on what he's feeling better on in the day, I think is a big advantage for him. Uh, and he's not stuck in that one car like some other players, like Cuxer97. Uh, but of course, nobody's going to say that Cuxer playing Batmobile is a disadvantage. That would be ridiculous. The 20 year old Italian is the only like sole Batmobile user uh, in the entire tournament. The RL RLCS Season 2 winner. He'll be looking to do uh, better than his t uh, teammate at the time and now former teammate Marky Duda in the 12 Titans Year 2. Um, just like he did in 2016. as I think Marky got second place in the Player of the Year 2016 in most, pe most people's eyes, but Kuxer was number one by far. Um, and, you know, he's got some decent recent results as well. L beating Scrub Killer 5-3 just over half a year ago. 3-0 over Marky Duda. Uh, losing in a tight 3-4 series to Devo, and then beating Dapper 4-2. Again, all these results uh, happened around about half a year ago, and then most recently losing 0-2 to Scrub, uh, which was like a fair bit ago as well. That was at, uh, in New York when they played on a LAN. Uh, so, well, they played in the same room. They, were on, they weren't playing on LAN, but they were in the same room playing together, and Scrub was able to take him down. Uh, I think Coxer, out of everybody in this tournament, has probably got the third or fourth best um, results against... Scrub number one is Fairy Peak and then KDOP number two. They both they both have positive win rates against Scrub. Cuxer has just I think dipped to a negative win rate with his recent two zero two loss to Scrub. Um, but they pretty much go fifty fifty historically. Uh, anyone could win on any given day. Uh, the only other player in the tournament who's had uh, good results against Scrub in the past is Lethemir. Uh, we'll take a look at him in a bit as well. But that's Cuxer. He is going to be a gatekeeper uh, for twelve Titans year two. So he'll you'll definitely be seeing him. Uh, in the second round, he won't have to play in round one. Uh, and the other gatekeepers are firstly K Dop. Um, I said there were two 19 year old Frenchmen. K Dop and Fairy Peak almost at the same birthday. It's quite weird. Uh, I, I I don't know how that ended up happening. It's two legendary Rocket League players have almost got the exact same birthday, and they live. I think they live. They, do they live close together? Fairy and K Dop. Do you live close together? I can't remember if, if that's true or not. Uh, but just short of Turbo Pulses. Achievement. I think Turbo's got the best like one-two punch achievements in this in the achievements category. Nobody can really beat two-time RLCS champion, but KDOP comes close with one-time RLCS champion, one-time RLCS runner-up in the second most recent RLCS. So not too bad. Uh, and he is the highest earner in Rocket League history to date. So I could have put that in there, but I decided just to write second place RLCS season three because it looked kind of good uh, next to that. If we look at his results, he has got a 2-3 loss to Floris, and that was in one of Floris's first uh, appearances, or one, you know, one of Floris's first appearances. Um, so that's not good news uh, for Kato to be dropping that um, early to Floris, uh, before, you know, when he's still an up-and-coming player. 0-3 uh, against Fairy Peak. That is by far KDOP's worst matchup. Historically, 
K-Dop has done so badly against Fairy Peak whenever they've played. That's the that's the matchup he wants to avoid, uh, if possible. And of course, that 3-2 over Marky Duda, incredible series. I talked about that before. Definitely go check it out if you haven't already. Uh, and dropping 1-3 to Devo, that's, I think, one of two times that they've played. The other time that they played, Fairy Peak was able to... or uh, Sorry, not Fairy Peak, K-Dop uh, was able to win versus Devo. Or was he? I'm trying to remember. Hmm. I can't actually. I can't actually remember. Uh, I, he definitely did lose that one, one three to deal with it. That's that's that did happen. Uh, and then beating Scrub Killer twice in a row. Last two times that Kid Up played Scrub, he beat him, two uh, zero and four three respectively. So this is like I said, the the other player that Scrub really wants to avoid. He wants to avoid Fairy and he wants to avoid Kid Up. And I'm sure he also wouldn't be too happy uh, going up against Lethemir, who probably has the best um, form going into Twelve Titans Year Two. Uh, also 21, so Marky's oldest equal. Um, but yeah, Lethemir, he won the two biggest 1v1 tournaments uh, in North American uh, Rocket League history, uh, the 1K Invitational and the Bad Panda Invitational. He won them both, uh, and his results from uh, the second one are a couple of those are at the bottom with the, well, the, the first one with the 3-2 win over Garrett in the semifinals, 3-1 win over Dapper in the finals. Uh, it's funny that Garrett G actually gave Lethmir uh, his toughest game in that whole tournament. That's that's a that was an interesting tournament to see for me. Uh, and then he managed to reverse sweep Scrub in a best of seven. That 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 four three win over Scrub. He lost three games. Then he said, "Can we play one more? I just want to see if I can beat you. I really feel like I can beat you." And then he beat him four times. So he did actually end up winning that uh, show match. And then to win the, uh, I've, I've actually got three one versus Lethmir up here. <laughs> I just realized it says three one. He beat himself. 3-1. No, he didn't. He beat Killer Recon 3-1. There you go. Fixed. <laughs> so he beat Sathy 2-0, AJ 2-1, and Killer Recon 3-1 to win the other 1K Invitational. So he's actually undefeated in, in series. The only the, the series that he lost a while before that was versus Floris. That's his one series that he has dropped recently, uh, and that was losing 3-2 two, to Floris. But that was on um, cross-server. So it's a bit of a, a, bit of a different you know, it doesn't. It, it's, it's hard to say if that's you know an accurate um, matchup. Did I put that in Floris's list of noteworthy results? I did. I put it. See, I put it in Floris as a positive, but I didn't put it in Lethemir's as a negative because I think it, although you can take you know you don't want to look at it or rely on that kind of thing too much. It is cross server. It is what it is. But Lethemir definitely that four three reverse sweeping of Scrub is still going to be in the back of Scrub's mind. I'm sure that was of course cross server as well, but. Uh, it, yeah, it really. I, I, I know Scrub is really annoyed at that one, but of course that does bring us to the last player uh, in the tournament, the current 12 Titans Year One champion, and also first place finisher of the 1K 1v1 EU Invitational that I ran, um, the the first big 1v1 tournament that I ran. So he's had multiple 1v1 tournament wins, youngest player in the tournament. Um, and yeah, we've got, actually, I did put, <laughs> I did put, uh, this result in as a negative for, for Scrub. Apparently I didn't for, uh, I didn't put for Lethemir. I didn't uh, put him losing to Floris as one of his most recent results, but I did for Scrub. I don't know why I did that, but anyway, it happened. Uh, Scrub got reverse swept. Uh, he also has bad matchups against Fairy and Kadop recently, beating Cux recently. That's big for him, but again, losing to Kadop, beating Floris. He's, so he's never he's never lost to Floris, so that's that is that is what it is. But uh, Scrub's actually, although he's you know the defending champion, and although he's uh, won uh, a big one v one tournament quite recently, um, beating Devo, Floris, and who else did he beat in the process? I can't remember who he beat in the first round, but it was definitely a stacked lineup, and Scrub was able to take the whole thing. Uh, but then in the next one v one tournament that I would ran, he ran into Fairy and Kate up in the double all them. Uh, he ran into Fairy, then the next in the lower bracket, he ran into Kate up. He just lost. Because if it seems that if Scrub runs into the French players, he doesn't do well. So they're the players that he really wants to avoid. Uh, I'm sure this this matchup against Lethemir is something he would like to see happen again. Uh, I, I would not be surprised if he if he's quite happy to see that. But that's that is uh, you know a, a really quick rundown uh, player profiles for the 12 Titans year two. Uh, I wanted to make this video like I said just to inform all of you guys because I've been getting so many people asking when is it going to be? When's 12 Titans? When's 12 Titans? Well now you know because it's been announced. The trailer's dropped again. Go watch the trailer because it's incredible. Uh, that's when it's going to be. If you need to take a note of it again, uh, and uh, all that information will be in the description uh, to get to go and see the trailer, which has this date and time in it. So you can't possibly forget. Uh, put it in your diary. Make sure that you're there on Twitch.tv forward slash League of Rockets to, to catch it live. And if you can't catch it live, 
it'll be on the YouTube channel, uh, League of Rockets YouTube channel after, so you can definitely catch it there. Anyway, that's it. We've got how many days? Less than two weeks. How many? Wow, it's actually really close. We've got, yeah, about 11 days until 12 Titans Year 2 is going to drop. And I, I don't know what the final production is going to look like. I did cast the game, so I'm very excited uh, to see your guys' reactions to it. But... Uh, the final part, you know, seeing the final product is going to be a really exciting experience for me as well because I don't get to see the the editing and I don't know all of the the secrets that uh, that League of Rockets puts in there. Um, so it's going to be very very exciting. Anyway, that's going to be it for today. I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Big thanks again for watching. Take care and goodbye.